Welcome to your UA Light Celestial Insight. Hello everyone, happy Virgo season and happy solar return to those who are celebrating this month and happy retrograde season. I hope this message finds you doing well and taking good care. And if you are not, then this is the month and season where the cosmos lend incredible support to your goals and taking good care in every sense and in every area of your life, given we are experiencing a cosmic kite during Virgo season, while we also still have eight planets retrograde right now during this retrograde season, including Mercury retrograde while it is exalted in Virgo, right? And in this video, I'll explain what this cosmic kite is and how to strategically work with the energy to successfully navigate the month. And we'll end this video with some short and sweet horoscope and tarot insight into how it is all affecting you personally this month according to your zodiac sign. So take a minute to like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel and the podcast. And if you're listening into the podcast, tap those stars to leave us a positive review. Definitely make sure that you listen and watch the messages for your rising or ascendant sign in addition to your sun and moon sign and any sign in which you have a stellium, okay? They are all time stamped below, okay? But let's get into this collective astrology and just overall UA light celestial insight, okay? So... Like last month, September is a month for everyone to continue this big audit, okay, and to realign all areas of life as we approach the next set of eclipses next month in October, okay? The sun and Mercury retrograde in Virgo really support the work of completing the practical, incremental, day-to-day and organizational aspects of realigning life, right? Like the retrograde planets are prompting us to do. Mercury stations direct mid-month at the time of the new moon in Virgo as well. So that means that this month is all about reflection and integration, right? Making sense of our day-to-day and spiritual experiences and any information we receive, okay? So for September, the astrology is actually pretty straightforward, positive, and practical. The memo is to carefully review, reflect, and course correct. But if you stay open, attentive, and accountable to your goals, sacred supportive synchronicities will find you and divine timing will align you okay this month and going forward through eclipse season okay and we'll get into more of the astrology details but in general right if you think about it you most likely recognize that september tends to be a month of focus mindfulness and life management or simply focused mindful life management, okay? No matter where you are in the world or in your life journey, it tends to be a transitional month of organization, preparation, education, concentration, and commitment to tasks and processes that will contribute towards some larger goal. It's that time when school starts, wherever you are in the world, September tends to also be that point where you may be organizing life in alignment with transitioning to a new weather climate season, at least before the climate crisis. And in the Western calendar, it is the month of preparation for the final fourth quarter of the business year, right? Where you may be reviewing and reorganizing your affairs and also doing budgets and balancing finances finances to finish the last quarter strong before the Western New Year. Whereas cosmically, it is the halfway or six month point of the year in relation to the astrological New Year that begins with Aries season, still making it a time to review 
progress and do checks and balances and really recommit to any intentions. And this all aligns with when we experience Virgo season, a cosmic spotlight on tending to educational and organizational matters and achieving optimal health, okay? And by health, I mean efficient harmony and balance in all areas of our lives, right? So health of our physical temple or our bodies, right? <laughs> our homes slash the temples that we live in. Also our businesses and budgets and our relationships, okay? So in terms of Virgo sign characteristics, right? Virgo is the second earth sign. It's represented by the mutable earth maiden or the mother, right? Who is ruled by Mercury. And so the archetypal characteristics and strengths of this energy are being a responsible steward of the earth's resources and all life, right? So balancing the practical work of nurturing all life and tending to the details of efficient systems for holistic life improvement and harmony. And it requires creativity, right? Reason and education, attention to detail, intuition, and the self-discipline and delicate balance of the self-care required for sustaining all of this improvement of the self and systems, okay? And so it is about this mindfulness and momentum that is required for life management and how mindful life management requires efficient and sustainable use of our material resources and our embodied resources like physical health, right? Your intellect and common sense and your personal talents, okay? So Virgo also forms a natural square to the sign of Sagittarius that is ruled by Jupiter. And so with Virgos and Virgo transits, there is also always an inherent relationship to learning, collaborating or using practical knowledge talents and learned skills for expansion, for financial increase, and for creating possibilities, improvements, and goods and services that benefit the self while still being in service to others, right? All of these aspects inform why Virgos are seen to be very enterprising, right? Organized, analytical, opinionated, but also nurturing and hands-on with creative or trade skills, right? It's their nature. And so this month in particular, while we are in this retrograde season, um, that is also a countdown to the eclipses in the New Year's, this Virgo energy really comes in handy, right? And these Virgo characteristics are really great to hone while the cosmos and life circumstances urge, review, course correction, and healthy improvements. Additionally, the sun and moon in Virgo make an important trine to Jupiter while it's retrograde in Taurus, right? Which is the sign of food, money, banking, and self-improvement. And so there is an undeniable emphasis here on responsibility and positive life improvements and health and also blessings, right? And so... I mentioned that the September astrology is pretty straightforward, positive, and practical. The Sun and Mercury retrograde in Virgo really support the work of completing, like I said, the practical day-to-day -day and organizational aspects of reviewing, being in reflection, reinvention, and course correction like the retrogrades are prompting. And this is also pertinent with Uranus and Jupiter now being retrograde in Taurus and making some key aspects with the sun, with Mercury retrograde and the new moon in Virgo this month, 
with these aspects and with Venus moving direct through Leo this month, I mentioned that if you stay open, right, optimistic, attentive, and just accountable to your goals and responsibilities, key information and sacred synchronicities will really find you and divine timing will align you. So let's get into the key aspects this month. Things really start moving uh, in that first week of September, right? Where Uranus is now moving retrograde, Venus stations direct on the 3rd, and Jupiter stations retrograde the next day on the 4th, okay? And in terms of Venus direct in Leo, this is such a positive placement, right? And uh, you can review your Venus and Leo scopes here on the channel uh, in one of the podcast episodes for more on what this is means for you. I've talked about what these other retrograde planet positions mean in last month's astrology as well in terms of the eight planets that are retrograde, right? And you can find all of those videos in the current transits playlist. But Uranus and Jupiter retrograde um, in Taurus are the new energies that will essentially begin expressing themselves this month. Uranus stationed retrograde on August 29th and will remain retrograde throughout the rest of the year through to January 27th in 2024. And then Jupiter stationed retrograde, I mentioned on September 24th, and will also be retrograde for the remainder of the year until December 30th. Okay. And the energy of Uranus retrograde is really all about reinvention. It's about finding new ways to do something, to maybe make something better. It's also even about returning to um, source essence or inspiration, right? And generally finding new inspiration, um, maybe uh, finding new ways of making money, um, especially since this is in Taurus, right? And then in terms of Jupiter retrograde, right? It stations retrograde on the 4th while making a trine with the Sun and Mercury retrograde that where they're in conjunction with each other in Virgo, right? So, and then this is happening while Venus and Leo begins moving direct in a closing square with Jupiter newly stationed retrograde as well, okay? And so this really sets the tone for September being a month where lots of attention will or should be paid on review, revision, reinvention, and recommitment right? Particularly review, revision, and reinvention of creative, literary, and business ideas and projects, um, also administrative and contractual and organizational details and budgets, right? You could be rereading, revisiting, or revising old documents, reviewing things that you learned, or taking some sort of course or exam in an area of business, health, wellness, or psychology, or really any subject, right? Or, you know, investing in something related to your personal appearance or beauty, fashion, creative art, um, and entertainment industries, right, that ultimately play a role in some larger goal or vision that you have or in the long-term success of something. And uh, that even plays a role in a sort of a lifestyle change that significantly improves your income or your health, well-being, your confidence, and your longevity. This square between Venus and Leo and Jupiter retrograde and Taurus is really about renewing faith in goals and expanded potential and also strategies, right? Um, self-worth and, and the self-confidence that are involved to achieve them, right? And in terms of um, world predictions, 
I have to say that this is also a point where we will begin to see a return of global health news reports of rising infection rates um, and even talks about reinstating preventative and social distance measures related to health and travel, right? And maybe, you know, these sort of looming questions about government response and health and economy and social support services in the event that things become dire again. Um, While at the same time, right, this astrology points to potential discrepancies, right, and distrust in sources of information and also in leaders. With this astrology, I also have to say in terms of larger world predictions, social gatherings for work, learning, and entertainment could potentially make you more vulnerable um, for any sorts of sickness, given that health vigilance hasn't been as high lately, right? After the previous global responses to the pandemic and to natural disasters and war, many may not trust the motives of governments, health experts, or even news sources who downplay or who either exaggerate details and statistics. And so this month's retrograde and Virgo season astrology, particularly the cosmic kite aspect this month, is also a sort of important moment of review and deja vu, right, in terms of what have world events really taught you about being personally empowered and educated about health, well-being, sources of income, and just life support, right? And we'll get into more details of this cosmic kite aspect, but this aspect and other aspects this month essentially feature a conversation between Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus, right? While they're retrograde, um, you know, in the sign of Taurus concerning our economy, climate, and travel, and also you know, Pluto and Capricorn, which is all about governments, leaders, and personal empowerment. And, you know, between the sun, Mercury, and moon, and Virgo, right? And the sign of skill building and working with others and health. And Neptune and Saturn and Pisces, where, you know, these placements are also about containing the spread of airborne infection and more. Okay, Um, and related to health and this astrology, I also have to say that um, the astrology is also um, giving a sort of warning to also check your water supply sources, right? And to really inspect the cleanliness of any water sources that you may be uh, using for your drinking water or for your health in general, right? Checking the sort of cleanliness of water filters. Um, I'm definitely getting a sort of psychic message related to this astrology to sort of just issue that warning out there, right? To think, um, to do some review related to whether or not your water contains chlorine or contaminants or fluoride, um, because these things could potentially be impacting uh, your health in ways that you may not be aware of at the same time as there's also this sort of um, sort of message to be really considerate about health in general related to infections and airborne disease, okay? So yeah, that's definitely the message that I'm getting here in relationship to all of this activity in Virgo that is in opposition to uh, Neptune in Pisces and Saturn in Pisces. Okay, so just take that with you, all right? But in any case, <laughs> the particular trine aspect between Jupiter retrograde and the Sun and Mercury and the closing square between Venus and Jupiter that kicks off the month the first week, it also really uh, sort of sets the tone for this month being one full of mystical and lucky synchronicities, right? Like chance meetings and relationships, knowledge, events, and money that really help you manifest something, right? And that sort of mark a turning point in your journey. 
or some sort of matriculation or level up, right? You can think of this month as the supportive cosmic prelude to the upcoming October eclipses, right? Where this month the divine is essentially like throwing you a life jacket and a ladder, right? In the form of synchronicities to really make sure that you don't miss the portal to some significant opportunity for elevation, recovery, improvement, and transcendence, right? However, your commitment and initiative and you asking for what you need, um, your accountability with tasks and attention to detail, these will most likely be the avenues for you seeing the signs or receiving the synchronistic and mystical support that the divine is sort of placing in your path, right? Think right time and place kind of circumstances, right? Um, I'm getting the message that you being responsible and on schedule with something will knowingly and unknowingly sort of set you up, right, to manifest something and in a long cycle of something <laughs> and make significant progress in some new beginning in your life, right? Some new way of being, living, and even identifying and presenting yourself, right? This is a way that the divine is sort of testing your commitment for something and offering a sort of reward or a karmic return of blessings and opportunities that will have a sort of slingshot effect for your future. In reviewing and reflecting, you will most likely be coming to higher understandings of how and why certain setbacks or setups for a success in alignment with your deepest dreams but beyond what you could have imagined, right? And this is what Uranus and Jupiter retrograde in Taurus will be revealing to you and really offering to you, right? Regardless of where they are in your chart, what house they're in, right? In many cases, you will come to gratitude for many closed doors and detours. And there's a way in which the wisdom of experience and new knowledges that you have access to now will make certain things primed for the best success, right? And this astrology this month might also offer you retrograde surprises in the smallest of ways as well, right? Shipping, refund, or communication mishaps or delays that end up putting you in contact with a person, a resource, some sort of knowledge or something that turns out to be better suited and essentially a blessing in disguise, right? And in the vein of organization, responsibility, revision, and these sort of deja vu blessings, however, a key tip for these aspects is to really take time for detailed planning so that you can set reasonable expectations. Okay, and notice I didn't say set realistic expectations. And that's because it's important to actually have faith in your dreams and in magic because anything is possible with proper planning and preparation. So plan properly so you don't overpromise, but also don't limit yourself either in terms of your goals or what you can achieve. Okay, while feeling into this month's energy, psychically, I kept getting images and phrases like boomerangs or bow and arrows and like slingshots, right? And um, it's because there's a sort of boomerang, bow and arrow and slingshot quality to the life events this month. And really until January because of the retrogrades and the eclipses, all right? Um, and so there is this sort of theme of how, you know, five steps back can put you a hundred steps ahead, right? How a lot of things can sort of like catapult or slingshot you into success, right? And given that Jupiter retrograde has just begun and makes such key aspects this month, it actually maps onto the significance of Jupiter, you know, being the ruler of Sagittarius, right? And Sagittarius, um, you know, it's symbolized by the centaur 
archer, right? So it really reiterates this message of, you know, archery, right? Understanding that sort of pullback and slingshot effect, right? How setbacks are really key to successfully making an idea or a dream a reality, right? Because setbacks clarify your vision. They help you with setting your target right, your aim and your intentions, and you hitting your target or achieving success through preparation, meeting divinely orchestrated opportunities, okay? And the opposition between Virgo and Pisces is all about this. But also, you know, this tension of how self-belief and mental and physical health can affect it all. Right. And so in honor of Virgo season, right, and this Virgo new moon, but also the Aries full moon that is closing out the month, you know, where Aries is all about taking initiative and, and faithful, fearless action to be true to yourself. Spirit has this question for you this month and for the remainder of the year, really. And the question is, what if all you had to do to achieve success is simply be you at your best? What if all you had to do to achieve success is simply be you at your best? Okay, and I was given the sort of psychic message that... um in, in the form of advice, right, in terms of the positive psychology of self-accountability and achievement, how, how these things could really be super helpful this month, right? And I'm saying the positive psychology of self-accountability and achievement, but that really just breaks down to taking life one day at a time. Right? Being present in your day, setting the intention every day to do your personal best just for today. Right. And that's also a Reiki mantra, right? And so there's this advice, right? That, you know, looking your best and eating well to feel your best and putting blinders on and just sticking to your schedule one task at a time, how checking things off, you know, really helps to create a field of motivational positive energy in your mind, your body and spirit, right? Just from the rewards of every little achievement, right? In this sort of experiment of self-accountability and doing your personal best every day. And maybe even that is, is, is the part of it too, right? Think of this month as a, a experiment, right? This fun experiment of self-accountability and doing your personal best every day. That will be the key to working with this month's astrology in integrating practical positive psychology into your life, right? And in terms of working with this month's lucky astrology, if you see the thumbnail for this video, you'll see that it is titled something like retrograde season surprises, right? A cosmic kite catapults your success. And it is related to the trine between the sun, Mercury, and Jupiter that begins as early as the first week of the month on September 4th. And two other trines that gradually form and have effect through to, you know, a week after the new moon in Virgo that takes place on September 15th. So really, September 4th through the 22nd, this cosmic kite is in formation and in effect, right? And really just affecting the whole month. These are the aspects that shape the themes that I've mentioned so far as well. And um, you can see them here in the chart for the new moon in Virgo that takes place on September 15th, right? Um, so if you look at the image here, right, you will see that 
there in the blue, these lines really come together to form the shape of a kite, right? And a kite in astrology is really this sort of figure representation of a grand trine, where uh, the grand trine is also joined by um, a sextile between um, two of the planets that are a part of the grand trine. So in this configuration for our new moon in Virgo, we have the sun and the moon meeting up with each other, right, in conjunction in Virgo. And they are in opposition, direct opposition to Neptune. Well, it's not an exact opposition, but they are in opposition to Neptune and Pisces directly across from it. All right. And that's where we have this red line. If you're following along on YouTube, you'll be able to see the uh, visual for this, right? You'll be able to see this chart for this new moon in Virgo. So we have this red line across from the sun and the moon linking us to Neptune and Pisces, right? And then if you look at the the kite uh, outline in blue here, you'll see that uh, there is a triangle that forms with the sun and the moon connecting with um, Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus on the left side. And then from the sun and the moon, we also have this, uh, this angle here, this blue line that is connecting to Pluto and Capricorn. And then we see that Pluto and Capricorn and Taurus and Jupiter, I mean, and, and uh, the Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus also connect with each other. This is the grand trine. It's essentially the... Um, a hundred degree relationship between these earth signs, right? That's the easiest way to say it. And then um, Taurus and Capricorn are 60 degrees away from Pisces on either side. And so these planets essentially form a sextile to each other. Pluto and Capricorn form a sextile to Neptune and Pisces, and uh, Uranus and Taurus, Uranus and Jupiter and Taurus also form a sextile to Neptune and Pisces, right? And these are essentially the coordinates and the makings of this kite, right, in astrology. And so they're all in conversation with each other, right, in in um, a very particular way. Because it's a new moon, it's a very auspicious celestial configuration. We have a new moon. We also have Jupiter and Uranus and Pluto in the mix, right? These are all major planets that are a part of luck and transformation and blessings and opportunity and empowerment, right? And so the cosmos are giving you support in the form of helpers that may be foreigners and strangers, um, that may work in institutions like banks, schools, or training programs. Um, help can also come to you in the form of information, money, and aligned timing, right? That contributes positively to the long term, like I mentioned. And Neptune is also health and creativity as well. And so similar to what I was saying about these characteristics associated with Virgo, with Neptune um, in Pisces also being a part of this configuration, right? Health, your mindset, and your discernment are all assets for you realizing something, right? But additionally, similar to last month's collective theme that focused on relational and group dynamics, this month, this new moon astrology also illuminates this main theme about the tension of working in teams or with others, right? So we're getting into this new moon in Virgo astrology specifically right now. So this month, even with collaborative work being positive and helpful, you're still encouraged to not be self-sacrificing 
and to work towards your own individual goals. The degrees and themes of responsibility highlighted by the New Moon Astrology specifically emphasize how your management of various relational dynamics, responsibilities, and your self-belief how they will be the sort of benchmark of your spiritual growth and of your readiness and your capability to receive and achieve something that you've dreamed of and that maybe you doubted was possible, right? And that maybe you were working toward for a long time. And, you know, where it can be this sort of springboard as well, successfully launching you forward into attainment and into a new reality and sense of self. The Virgo Sun and Moon opposition with Neptune and Pisces in the configuration here also gives us insight into what we need to work on, right? So all of the work life and health, balance and practical organizational stuff that I mentioned, but also proper personal boundaries and discernment and diplomacy in relationships so that you protect your own personal best interest. And so that, you know, you're the master of your destiny and happiness, even while you may be learning and working with others. Okay. It's important to exercise your free will, individual decision making and commitment to your personal vision versus being self-sacrificing or too easily persuaded and influenced right while also being mindful of not letting that like steer into some huge ego and and sense of self-importance right and this is courtesy of the venus and leo square with jupiter retrograde right it's also courtesy of mars and libra (laughs) and courtesy of the degree that neptune is stationed at right and the fact that two other planets play a part in this virgo new moon opposition with neptune okay Now, a lot of times, Neptune in Pisces is associated with trickster energy and potential deception and loss all on its own. But in this full moon astrology opposition between the Virgo new moon and Neptune in Pisces, the moon and the sun are also joined by Pallas while they're in Virgo, while in opposition on the other side, Neptune is also... Uh, joined in a conjunction by Nessus, right, in Pisces. And um, additionally, Mercury in Virgo and Saturn in Pisces are in an opposition at specific degrees that really indicate the importance of taking wise preventative measures to protect your best interests, okay? Now, these placements can also be about secret, sacred, or psychic knowledge being revealed that can be to your benefit. And so with the sextile between Neptune, Nessus, and Jupiter retrograde, and Pluto and Capricorn, I would say that all of that applies here. Anything potentially deceptive and tricky can be revealed to you, but also so that you're able to avert or recover some loss, right? While also, um, you know, coming to see how past losses are of great value to you now with what you may be navigating, right? And so, We're going to close out the month, lastly, in terms of the September astrology with a full moon in Aries, but I'll cover that in the next video. So make sure that you're subscribed. So now let's get into your personal monthly horoscopes and new moon messages, okay, from the stars and the cards. Hello, dear Aries. So, Aries, in terms of the astrology this month, the cosmic kite and other aspects absolutely point to practical, spiritual, and financial growth opportunities for you this month related to health, uh, health and wellness professions, or even health and wellness professionals related to creative skills, uh, work-life balance, new work relationships, um, and you leveling up in terms of your maturity, responsibility, accountability, discipline, and mastery. Because your work, career, 
um, and financial houses are lit up this month, this could absolutely be a month where you're taking on more responsibility and even meeting powerful mentors or influential figures that help your career and reputation, right? Um, or where you could also be employing others to help with responsibility during this time. With the cards here, I'm definitely getting this message that um, it's important for you to potentially uh, detox this month, right? Cleaning your vessel to have clear spiritual insight and high stamina for work-life responsibilities, uh, high vibrations and confidence in yourself this month could be really, really helpful for you in terms of helping you to fearlessly embark on new experiences that are connected to your dreams and goals and just some special things that you have the opportunity to achieve. For some of you, um, the four of pentacles and the death cards here in reverse are about, you know, physical and internal and spiritual transformation. And you, you know, nearing the end of integrating some really powerful changes that you've undergone the last two months. And so, you know, the cards speak to how there may be significant things that you can do this month toward completing or grounding or recovering and integrating the energy energies and wisdom from your recent profound spiritual transformation this month. And those things could be detoxing, right? Changing to a healthier diet, making sure that you are drinking spring water and not water with fluoride or other contaminants. Um, I'm getting that really strong particularly for the Aries Collective. Um, while it's also, it was also a sort of like general collective sort of PSA that I brought up in the general reading, but definitely getting that really strong. I got that message when I was actually putting together you all's astrology, right? To also relay that message to the collective. So Please invest in the health items that you need, switch out water filters, um, invest in spring water and coconut water, right? Um, these cards, you know, also speak to how there may also be significant markers that happen this month that indicate that you are completing and grounding and integrating energies and wisdom from, you know, profound spiritual transformation this month. And for some, it could be a significant menstruation cycle or even having recently given birth. Um, for others, it's heightened intuition and synchronicity, sorry, that really just sort of confirmed to you something about your sort of spiritual growth process and where you're at in that journey, right? In this Knight of Cups here, you know, it's crossing a threshold of water, right? Signaling you transitioning into a new phase of life, right? Really from now until the end of eclipse season, where things will be flowing more smoothly for you. And where you're overcoming a significant sort of emotional ending, um, maybe even dressing yourself different to feel attractive and empowered as you take on your responsibilities, and where you will also be supported by others moving forward. You know, there's really a message to stay in touch with your heart and to be open to the divine helpers, the knowledge and the synchronicities that are showing up in your life this month, but to also maintain discernment, proper boundaries and focus on your individual goals like the collective astrology message mentions. And Aries, the collective astrology will always apply directly for you, um, particularly if you are in Aries rising and have a natural chart, okay? And so, you know, the thing that I really noticed about this Knight of Cups that is you um, for your message this month is that, you know, this Knight of Cups is soft, but they're still dressed in fashionable armor, right? And so it's signaling a youthfulness that you embody while still being, you know, emotionally intelligent, wise, determined, and focused, right? And, you know, as opposed to emotionally immature or gullible, which is what the Knight of Cups can typically signal for others, right? And so this, 
you know, could speak to this being a particular kind of superpower for you this month, your youthfulness, your peacefulness, your confident humility, and your attractiveness, excuse me, and your unique style of dress, all of these things being very important for your confidence, for making great impressions, and for mastering and sort of controlling the temperament in your relationship dynamics, right? And just increasing your abundance in ways that you are aware of, right? Um, As a potential for you, right? And so people may assume that you're younger or more inexperienced with some things than you are because of your youthful appearance and energy but i'm getting you know that is to your advantage right the combination of your talent your skill and your wisdom in combination with how you know youthful or unassuming you look these things will actually allure and intrigue and shock people, okay? So I'm getting that message for you. You know, say less and just do your best. Let your actions and the brilliance of what you create speak for you, right? And I'm getting that, you know, the wow and shock factor in many ways will help contribute to your success and earn you respect among people who are in senior positions of authority, right? And for any of you who work in beauty, fashion, entertainment, um, this Knight of Cups is also a message that these things can be very lucrative now, right, and in the future. Pay attention to any creative inspiration that you feel intuitively and jot down your ideas as they can be really successful. And also, when I was doing your reading, Aries, I was listening to a song, and um, the artist's name was called Victory, but the name of the song was called My Darling. And this song actually had a message for you in terms of assurance and victory, right? I got the message of, you know, assurance and victory, my darling, right, for the Aries Collective. And it's this message about how the path is like being cleared and protected and blessed for you this month in the form of the new experiences, people, and knowledge that is arriving on your path okay and with this uh with this knight of cups here on this on this horse right and with this stream of water i'm also getting the message that it's really important for you to take care of and maintain the hygiene of any of your pets for those of you who have pets maybe even children i don't know um but if you have a even if you have a pet that doesn't like baths it's important for you to wash them right to uh, maintain the hygiene of any pets right and in general keeping your home and closets clean and decluttered all of these things in combination with just like looking and smelling good could really help you stay mentally focused and productive this month Right. And this could be a month also in terms of this astrology and with the cards here. This could be a month where a financial burden is lifted this month, right? Maybe clearing a debt or getting more money, right? Or in general, making some sort of valuable connection or getting some sort of information that helps you to majorly improve your finances or or your credit in some way this month could really be on the table for you. And, um, you know, we have this card here that says stay on course, right, as essentially your advice for the month. And it reads, you are facing some big stuff in your life right now. This card is a request that you keep going and stay on course, however challenging this may feel. Please be assured that right now, this is the appropriate way forwards. The universe supports your direction and slow and steady progress is assured, right? And that absolutely maps on to the fact that, you know, 
overall this is virgo season and retrograde season right review revision dedication details all of these things are really important okay and so overall aries this month brings new beginnings and opportunities for improvement reinvention recovery and cosmic support in your personal style and appearance, holistic health, your career, co-worker relationships, and money matters. Continue integrating this expanded sense of self and the spiritual wisdom and understanding of your wealth potential this month. And stay tuned for your Aries full moon UA light celestial insight related to this full moon in Aries at the end of the month. I definitely hope that this aids your journey. Be sure to subscribe to the UA Light YouTube and podcast and leave some comments about how this resonates with you. Share this insight with someone that you love and make sure that you watch all of the readings related to your sun, moon, rising and stelliums. And thank you so much for listening and watching and take good care of your hearts. Hello, dear Taurus. So dear Taurus, the sort of theme or title for your reading for this month of September is called The Darling, right? Um, I'm getting a message for you with a song that I'm listening to called My Darling. And for Aries, it was a sort of spiritual message from the divine where the divine was addre addressing them as my darling and as beloved child while relaying a particular message. But for you all, I'm getting a message of the darling, right? You being the darling and this energy of you being doted on and adored by people, right? Being seen as a darling in the eyes of groups, clients, fans, or suitors, right? And for some of you, this is about getting gifts or some sort of special treatment, maybe luxury accommodations or experiences or VIP treatment or being uh, on the receiving end of some big romantic gestures or you being a guest of honor in some way. Right? And that really coincides with the stars and the cards here. The cosmic kite aspect this month is all about you forming new relationships, socializing, flirting, feeling attractive, and getting lots of social attention online or at events, especially related to personal style or your personality, your sensual appeal or creative artistry. There's a big shift happening in your confidence related to all of these things and related to you being courageous enough to share your truth and have belief in your potential, improve your ability to reach and surpass expectations, right? This emperor and king of cups here definitely coincides with this message about being doted on or taken care of or given romantic or VIP treatment or mental or mentoring others, right? And you're just being treated with respect and honor by people um, that you interface with, maybe even people who are older or who have power and experience, right? These cards also speak of personal power, right? And you seeing the positive results of speaking your truth, of connecting with people who are different from you, maybe even foreigners or people of different cultures, right? And you releasing a project out into the world and, you know, asserting your power and unique point of view to someone uh, maybe who has power, influence, a title, or seniority. And this could manifest in a lot of different ways, right? It could be a boss, a father, a senior person in your industry, a business partner, or even someone you date, right, who is older. Any of these sorts of encounters or even any sorts of performances, events, travel, or learning and educational experiences that you're involved in, these things could be really successful and gain you respect and rewards and helpful networks or sense of community, right? And even help you overcome some sort of significant emotional or creative block, 
right? I'm just definitely getting that you overcome pain or lack of confidence and disempowerment connected to the past this month. And, you know, your confidence in your potential, your influence, your creativity, um, public speaking or performance, or even um, your spiritual and psychic gifts, all of these things can increase this month, as does rewards, right? And, you know, overall, this month is just about new beginnings and opportunities for improvements, support, reinvention, and reward in educational, creative, entrepreneurial, networking, and travel ventures. Creative design and sales and promotion efforts, um, travel for work, romance, fun, your income, your attractiveness, um, changes in any of these things, and also even changes in your home design and personal style. All of these things can increase your confidence and your performance this month, okay? And I'm also getting from the cards, you know, because we have this emperor here and this empower yourself card, um, this Aries full moon could be really significant for you at the end of the month. And it could be, yeah, it just could be really significant, right? So stay tuned for your Aries full moon, UA light celestial insight. We'll get into more of that then. But I definitely hope that this aids your journey. Be sure to watch any of the other messages related to your sun, moon, rising, and stellium signs. And be sure to subscribe to the YouTube and podcast. Leave some comments and positive review of what resonates with you. Share this insight with someone that you love. Thank you so much for listening. Take good care of your hearts. Hello, dear Geminis. Geminis, tapping into your energy before I even pull the cards energetically, I could feel that you're worried about something this month, Geminis, right? Worried about the success of something. And the message for you is definitely to be confident. The divine is orchestrating something for your highest good, okay? And, um, once I pulled out all of the cards, you know, the messages just really continue to flow, right? Um, there's this message that if you have a significant meeting with a woman or mentors and teachers or even a significant milestone or if you do any work related to psychology, counseling, creative artistry, empowering others, right, or supporting women, it will be successful, right? And that was really specific and came through before I pulled the cards, right? And, you know, if you are meeting new people this month, be confident, right? It will be successful, the moon card and the wheel of fortune cards here are definitely speaking to the significance of this grand trine for you. Um, definitely, it's like it, it quite literally depicts it in terms of like these three, um, these three um, animal figures on each side of the moon in the moon card, and then also the sort of like astrological uh, wheel in the wheel of fortune card, right? So um, it's definitely indicating the significance of the grand trine here. And, um, you know, some of you are nervous about what's ahead this month that, that comes through here with this moon card. You may be nervous about teaching, learning, or demonstrating your knowledge this month. Or, you know, some of you may be worried about low sales, engagement, or turnout for something. And for some of you, you will experience this. But for others, you will succeed past your expectations. But the spiritual advice, no matter what happens, is to persevere this month and know that either outcome is a blessing in some way, right? Related to your long-term success and just a more satisfying success in the future, right? Whether it's positive results that you experience that you can build on or the knowledge that you gain from a seeming failure, right? That helps you reinvent or improve something and have better outcomes going forward, right? Or or you just meeting one significant person, right? Who, who shows up to something, right? Or participates in something that you're doing. 
who can be a blessing to you in some way, right? There's just definitely this message that divine timing is at work. And by the end of the month, you'll come to see that you've been gifted something that can really help you level up in some way, right? And this is absolutely Jupiter and Uranus and your ruling planet Mercury retrograde at work, okay? This is about blessings from delays, detours, and reinvention. And this queen of wands here being like, just stay confident, right? No matter what happens, right? Um, trust the mystery and trust the sort of divine support, right? I'm also getting this moon and queen of wands and eight of wands cards as a sort of message for you to detox right eat a fruit and plant-based diet to boost your immunity also take health precautions in your home and while traveling and while in airports right keep your home clean and look and smell good to feel and do good going forward this month definitely there's this message that a new diet or a perfume or incense or candles or flowers and plants in your home or you know some new hair or skincare could improve your well-being and sense of confidence right and you know this makes sense given that the new moon of virgo is spotlighting your fourth house of home and family life it's just all highlighting the importance of new routines spiritual ritual being in touch with the elements and and nature natural products even right to maintain high vibes in your home and family life and um you know for some of you, this astrology could point to how you may be living somewhere new and needing to, or needing to do a deep clean of your living environment, um, maybe have some public plumbing or bathroom maintenance done this month, or just in general, also keeping your bathroom clean, right? The stars and cards are also spotlighting the power of transforming core beliefs and building new habits with this focus on the fourth house, right? But also your ability to use psychology and art or wisdom from your culture to transform or empower yourself and others, right? And to enlighten others. I'm also seeing the cards and stars here point to some secret occult knowledge or a secret lucrative investment or asset that you have that you're being advised to insure and protect, right? Be careful what you share with strangers, um, especially I'm getting this message, be careful with sharing your address, all right? Um, that message came through. But overall, Gemini's new beginnings and opportunities for improvement, reinvention, recovery, cosmic support, and reward are available for you this month related to your creative, intellectual property, and any physical property assets, right? Learning, writing, teaching, coaching, and careers in psychology, spirituality, creative art art. Um, also losses is hitting blessings for greater gains, right? Blessings in disguise. Definitely focus on high self-belief, right? Spiritual rituals to keep your home vibes up this month, all right? Definitely stay tuned for your Aries full moon, UA light celestial insight. I hope that this message aids your journey. Dear Geminis, overall, you are asked to persevere, right? I'm getting that whatever it is that you're building, again, um, it has the potential to really grow and manifest into something really successful so long as you stay with it, right? And um, have a growth mindset, all right? Be sure to subscribe to the UA Light YouTube and podcast. Leave some comments of what resonates with you. Share this insight with someone that you love. Thanks for listening and take good care of your hearts. Hello, dear Cancers. The messages that are relevant for you this month feel really similar to last month's reading. So be sure to, sh to check out your um, July uh, horoscope and tarot insight that came through for you. I have it linked down below or in this video, okay? But the stars in the cards here give me this message about 
your humble abode. <laughs> All right. There's something here about you giving new people and even people that you're already close to a more intimate look into your daily life, your humble abode and or into your beliefs and innermost thoughts. OK, and that's really what I'm getting from this six, this six of pentacles card. All right. Um I'm getting that this is happening in various ways, right? It could be in terms of what you publish or share online or in specific groups, right? Um, in photos, writing, podcasting, or public speaking. It could also be in terms of maybe sharing a home or a living space with someone while you're traveling to events or landscapes and, and that creating an intimate look into your daily or inner life and hobbies. But also people um, getting insight into your beliefs and even your innermost values based on what it is that you promote and patron, right? So some of you may be vlogging or our lifestyle influencers um, but there's just this message here about intimacy and sharing insight and offering support in new and long-standing relationships this month where your vulnerability and open communication with others helps others be vulnerable or helps them through a vulnerable or emotional time and this could also be vice versa, right? Where someone offers this to you, right? Um, but I'm also getting that this month is about how your private, romantic, and public social media life um, mesh together, right? I'm um, getting scenarios of like introducing romantic partners, children, or different friend circles to each other, right? Um, just integrating new and different aspects of your life together, um, or maybe even uh, different cultures, right? That may have been separated or fragmented, right? Or, you know, the fact that maybe, you know, all of these different aspects of your life were never all sort of happening and going well all at the same time, right? And, and that being something that is happening now. Friends and family getting along, you know, daily routines, work life, romance, travel, all of these things being in balance, right? Just all of the many moving parts being well managed, right? Or, or being integrated, Last month's message and this month highlight, you know, how communication, time management, scheduling and navigating daily and foreign travel um, could be a focus, right? Even managing and revising routines and deadlines for teaching, writing, studying, publishing, podcasting. Um, these things could still be a focus, right? Um, or, you know, I'm also getting that this month you could really see how maybe a journaling routine really helps with your mental health. Or you could be thinking about uh, um, journaling in terms of like just collecting memories, right? I'm also getting this message about like how storyboarding or even scrapbooking, how those things could could be significant for for some of you this month. Um, again, scrapbooking in terms of collection collection of memories, but also storyboarding for some of you who are creative in some way in terms of how that helps you map out a vision. But generally, you know, daily planning, goal and travel planning and family planning were big themes in the last cancer reading and they remain so this month okay so definitely stay tuned for your aries full moon ua light celestial insight um Definitely be sure to subscribe, and I hope that this aids your journey. Be sure to check out the other messages related to your sun, moon, rising, and signs in which you have a stellium. Thank you so much for listening. Share this insight with someone you love, and take good care of your hearts. Hello, dear Leos. Last month and this month, I got a similar message for you all about you feeling a sigh of relief with a big release, okay? Where you all have been reaping rewards and love after completing the hardest work in a professional project that you were a bit nervous about in terms of its reception and projections of success, okay? 
The stars and cards suggested that since last month, you all have been, you know, filtering feedback and enjoying rewards and career growth and celebrating your accomplishments and success, but also checking the true loyalty and support from others around you so that you move accordingly. And I'm getting that this is related to a process you all have been in and may still be in this month where you are releasing some deep emotional blocks to shine from a healed space, right? Letting go of wounds and worries related to trust issues, projections of envy and jealousy in relationships, and, you know, contending with past sacrifices you made or losses that you took. And where, you know, despite having core loving relationships and success, maybe you've been on high alert, you know, and very wary, um, stealth and inaccessible in a way. And now maybe coming to see the pros and cons of being very stealth or keeping people at a distance in certain ways, right? Seeing how it has been a mechanism for asserting your standards and high self-worth through, you know, being inaccessible, but also a defense mechanism for protection and repelling tricksters and deceptive and undeserving energies because you're not really interested in surface relationships and, you know, the risks of betrayal and distrust, but where you're perhaps also coming to see how this way of being is also the exact recipe for creating surface level connections and suspicions and distress. It is a wall and a repellent of not just the bad, but also genuine um, connections, right? genuine personal and professional love and support that you want. And while you could absolutely still be surrounded by lots of people, receive love, uh, and be achieving success, you know, and you're so warm, you know, professionally, there is a particular sort of armor that may be affecting your success in comparison to the success of some others, right? In terms of people not feeling connected to you and therefore maybe disinterested in buying anything that you sell. In terms of your own personal healing, though, there is a message here about, you know, finding that sweet spot of being careful. Careful is the sort of in-between of not being hypervigilant, not being debilitated by perfectionism and any insecurity, but also not being careless, right, or too carefree, right? It's definitely about alignment, right, and having your head, your heart, your gut, your intuition all working, right, in alignment with each other. And that is absolutely why this card, you know, um, you are safe now, it is safe to relax, really came out in your last reading, right? It came out in your last reading as the sort of advice and the sort of spiritual affirmation for you, right? And the stars and the cards this month indicate, you know, that this process is still in effect, you know, in some ways contending with growing pains of power, success, and standards that do just make you outgrow people and, and that do make you perhaps unrelatable to some sometimes. And, you know, maybe you're still contending with how money and power changes relationships and affects your ability to form relationships from a sort of genuine basis of relating over commonalities, right? And building care and trust as opposed to just, you know, surface level socializing, popularity, and just having fun times, right? And some of you may be having a breakthrough this month, right? Grieving and facing that reality and how you can't let those things make you dim your light or change your values and, you know, high sense of self-worth like you have in the past. I'm definitely getting this message that, you know, with this month's cards and astrology that it could be important for you to review how, um, these things affect your relationships in other ways, like trauma bonding, right? Um, looking at the ways that you may also 
hold on to certain relationships out of a sense of insecurity and fear of trusting new people and and taking that risk of being betrayed, right? And how you may be holding on to certain relationships of just wanting to feel familiarity, right? But this new moon and this cosmic kite definitely indicates that you are making an active effort to form more camaraderie and connection with co-workers or people in your professional network or your industry or just in your community, right? Um, your career growth is continuing, right? It's continuing and it's incredible, right? I'm getting that some of you may be working through insecurities about your physical and professional appearance, maybe, and even considering certain changes that you want to make. Um, this astrology is also about how you may be contributing to causes that mean a lot to you, right? And continuing to Think broadly about how you can continue to have positive social impact while in this journey of continued self-love, self-improvement, and career growth um, in fashion, beauty, and entertainment, right? And overall, dear Leos, new beginnings and opportunities for improvement, reinvention, recovery, cosmic support, and reward are a focus for you, particularly related to money and career achievements and milestones, public and professional reputation, um, camaraderie and trust with co-workers or industry peers, and just your hard work and investments paying off. So definitely stay tuned for your Aries full moon, you a light celestial insight. I hope that this aids your journey. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the UA Light YouTube and the podcast. Leave some comments and a positive review of what resonates with you and share this insight with someone that you love. Thanks for listening and take good care of your hearts. Hello, dear Virgos. The general astrology message, of course, applies to you all. And last month and this month, it is all about balance, boundaries, and partnerships in your personal and professional life. Balance in terms of you maintaining a connection to your health, your heart, and your mind intelligence, maintaining connection to your center as you juggle multiple responsibilities and ventures as this multifaceted creative person. For many of you, these ventures are educational, include travel, and are entrepreneurial, right? And uh, maybe including school, right? Exams, uh, travel for tours, or uh, big projects and sales and promotions, opportunities and music, media and sales that uh, maybe last for an extended stretch of time and that require commitment. Some of you are also perhaps working remotely uh, in telehealth or other areas and maybe even launching new brands. This is also about balance in terms of finding balance in work, travel, time for romantic partners, children, pets, and fun. Some of you are tending to a long distance relationship or considering the pros and cons of separation in a marriage or partnership or in accepting new offers in love and business, right? The stars and cards just really indicate that contracts and boundaries and relationship matters are requiring a lot of careful consideration and navigation right now. And this makes sense in a Virgo in retrograde season, right? Where there are new beginnings and opportunities for improvements, reinvention, cosmic support and reward for you in creative entrepreneurial and travel ventures, sales and promotions in media and music and, and even uh, in reaching forgiveness or renewing trust, passion, fun and faith in close relationships and committed business and love partnerships. The cards from last month um, highlighted this overall theme about how you all are navigating situations of 
teaching people how to treat you themselves and others and even in all areas of your life or in different areas for some of you right maybe as a parent a professional a friend and a lover um and this could manifest in terms of you um teaching treat teaching people how to treat you themselves and others in terms of the behaviors or beliefs that you overlook, that you co-sign or enable, or that you confront and course correct. And in terms of what prices you charge for whatever you offer, right? Or in terms of just the terms and conditions and in contracts and in terms of how you treat and express yourself, right? Last month, if you look at the cards here, I'm showing the spread. Last month, the Eight of Swords here indicated that a line has or would be crossed, right? Or, or that the effects of a lack of a boundary or course correction with something would rear its head and need to be addressed. And the journey card appeared to advise, you know, being wise and handling yourself and others and to not ignore wisdom of your instincts and the wisdom of others that may be loud and clear around you, right? And that that you would come up against this line of imparting wisdom, but letting others have their own journey, right? But would also be or needing to be setting boundaries around how much you let yourself be affected by others' journeys, right? And, you know, just having to question whether something is detrimental to you and whether you are staying aboard a potentially sinking ship, right? And, you know, the Queen of Cups reverse showed up indicating that parenting or feeling emotionally connected to someone you love or emotionally supported yourself or you know how feeling emotionally overwhelmed by your own or others difficult emotions could be challenges that you have been contending with right and the knight of swords and the sun came out reverse to indicate that unpleasant truths would appear related to the sustainability of a relationship, right? And related to any uh, health issues or deceptive behaviors or your own and or of your own or, or someone else's, right? And where you would be confronting the ways you may be actively choosing to believe or overlook an illusion or a lie or harmful practices of someone close to you because of love, loyalties, and keeping up appearances, right? Or maybe refusing to accept or examine a belief about others or yourself, right? So there's just this question about, I was getting a message about enabling, about maybe even fears of being canceled if you go against popular opinion or beliefs. And, you know, it all came back to this question of how are you teaching people to treat you, right? Or to behave, right? In the case of enabling behaviors. And, it was related to these outcome cards, right, that came out, which was the Page of Pentacles and the Shadow Work. And so if you look here, the cards pulled for September, you know, it essentially picks up where those messages left off, right, with the Page of Pentacles as the first card that came back out for you all this month, joined by the King of Swords. And it's really pointing to the new work and money-making opportunities and contracts in your life and how it requires expressing hard feelings, maybe, or boundaries. And also just this overall sense of having to have hard conversations to find solutions, right? And maybe not letting emotions or pleas or, or, or potential cloud your judgment and your assessment of the facts and making a smart decision, right? For many of you, these are scenarios in your personal and professional partnerships, while for others, it's about the scenarios in your, prof in your professional work where you counsel or support others, right? In any case, this is a this is about you all trying not to let your personal emotions or your personal life hardships affect your performance at work as well, right? And you also separating your personal and professional life. Definitely the advice is for you all to 
take the time you need for careful consideration and analysis, but also don't avoid hard truths or conversations any longer, right? With heartfelt honesty and honest assessment of the facts, outcomes could surpass your expectations. And that's definitely what these two cards are pointing to here. Open the floodgates and the outcome. And these read, the Open the Floodgates card reads, if we are unable to acknowledge and talk about our feelings, they stack up and build up like a pressure cooker waiting to blow, coloring our ability to see clearly. This card calls you to acknowledge your emotions and find a way to release them. Write down your thoughts and feelings, and if needed, reach out to professional help. And then the outcomes card says, to not be too attached to a specific outcome. In any new situation, the possibilities are open-ended. Anything might happen. Try not to prescribe a fixed outcome within your mind, as this may limit your availability to access the infinite scope of possibilities set to guide you in the best possible direction, okay? So, dear Virgos, I wish you the best of luck in your endeavors in finding balance and happiness this month. No matter what happens, this astrology is one where blessings can appear in disguise. So definitely, you know, remember that. Definitely stay tuned for your Aries full moon, UA Light Celestial Insight. <laughs> I hope that this message aids your journey. Be sure to watch any of the other messages as they relate to your sun, moon, or rising uh, sign and any signs in which you have a stellium. Subscribe to the YouTube and podcast and leave some comments and a review of what resonates with you. Share this insight with someone you love. And thanks for listening. Take good care of your hearts. Hello, dear Libras. Last month's message for you centered this theme of you letting your inner shadow live, right? The stars and cards suggested that you all have entered an era of embracing being the villain and the bad guy in some people's eyes, right? Embracing your imperfections, your aggressiveness and competitiveness, and maybe being cocky, confident, opinionated, and unfiltered in various degrees of refinement and <laughs> recklessness, right? And you may be contending with the various consequences of this shift, maybe uh, issues and crises in relationships, right? And much of this is connected to how Many of you have lived a long life of repressing and suppressing your innermost thoughts and true feelings and, you know, aggressions in order to be a people pleaser and to be likable or diplomatic, you know, for fear of being judged, right? And you may have been unconscious of how that habit of being out of touch with voicing your personal truth has resulted in a mode of being that led you to create a whole life out of being in denial about certain things, right? How that can lead to projecting your issues onto others and therefore not being self-aware and accountable of your own shadow truths and relationships because of a habit of not being honest with others about their shadow truths, right? And so... The Libras seem to now be in this process of undoing that, right? And coming to terms with how you may have betrayed yourself in the past by not living your truth and facing your own inner fragmentation or antagonisms. And, you know, it's manifesting in all of these different ways and at varying degrees of acting out and and reveling in you know shadow behavior and healthy integration of what it means to live a life speaking and living honestly and unapologetically for others right and this is absolutely written in the stars related to the note of karma being in your sign right in your house of identity body image personality and point of view in opposition to the note of fate, Eris and Chiron, the wounded warrior, right? In your 
in your house of relationships, right? And just shining a light on integrating a more independent, honest, authentic, and unapologetic way of being in your world, right? And shying away or, or transforming your relationship to codependency and people pleasing or passive aggression and other shadow qualities, right? That may have been your way of boosting your confidence or making your way in the world in the past, right? Right. And at the same time, there is some big activity related to your eighth house of losses and gains and committed relationships, right? And just indicating this process of soul searching and taboo and dark shadow topics and, and energies, right? And so for some, this may need refinement and reconsideration of extremes in terms of, you know, coming to learn how living a life of radical authenticity, truth, and independence doesn't have to translate into, um, you know, acting out and, and behavior that alienates others, right, in terms of shadow behavior that needs deeper interrogation, healing, transformation, and healthier integration. This astrology this month sheds a light, you know, on the losses and gains and creative inspiration that may be happening in your life, right, related to this transformation, right, and this process of integrating the shadow, right? Um, it could be happening in your love and co-worker relationships, your finances, and in your home and living environment on behalf of this personal inner transformation, right? Certain love and business relationships, partnerships, living circumstances, and family dynamics are, are shifting, ending, beginning, or being positively transformed. And your creative artistry is changing based on transformations in your point of view as well. And so I say, you know, while this message could potentially be triggering for some, you know, it, it's absolutely not about judgment, right? But it is absolutely about what the stars and the cards are sort of indicating, right? And, you know, the question is, how can you be present and conscious, non-judgmental, and centered in your truth as well in this process, right? Overall, Libras, new beginnings and opportunities for review, improvements, reinvention, recovery, cosmic support, and reward are possible for you this month related to your deepest thoughts, beliefs, and creative projects your mental health and any addictions, your core beliefs, core relationships and home life, co-worker and leadership dynamics, and even reconciliations and recovery from losses or, or medical operations. You could experience great gains and losses from a marriage, divorce, or a business partnership or property investment. Or all Libras have grace while in this process of deep internal and external transformation. Stay tuned for your Aries full moon, UA Light Celestial Insight. Of course, it is so relevant for you all, um, given that this is your sister sign. I hope that this message aids your journey. Be sure to subscribe to the UA Light YouTube and podcast. Leave some comments and a review of what resonates with you. Share this insight with someone that you love. Take a care of your hearts. Be sure to watch the other messages related to your sun, moon, rising, and any sign in which you have a stellium. Hello, dear Scorpios. The stars and cards indicate that you have been having some profound spiritual, creative, cultural, travel, and group experiences lately that are connected to this greater personal and professional rebirth that has been happening. And the cards just really demonstrate this so clearly and perfectly. Your message is short and sweet in that way, right? This Virgo and retrograde season just really offers new beginnings and opportunities for improvement, reinvention, recovery, cosmic support, and reward relating to writing, 
teaching, publishing and promoting your work in the world, receiving respect and more power in your career to create change and positive impact, and gaining insight and feedback that helps you, or you giving feedback and support that helps others. It's a time when networking and creating significant relationships can lead to significant collaborations, achievements, and social impact. You may be inspired by the spiritual wisdom and point of view by someone very different from you this month or have opportunities to be that significant source of inspiration and rebirth for others. With Mars in the South Node in your 12th house and your social houses lit up with the astrology this month, there's such a powerful spiritual and mystical quality to your journey and everyone who you meet right now. People are appearing in your path and you in others' path by divine design. And for the purpose of closing the door on your past, for deep spiritual transformation, empowerment, and ascension that also plays a part in a larger collective divine plan. <laughs> like, it's really deep. A special connection in your life could be activating past life wisdom, soul flutters, right? creative ideas, and it's something like a soul union. That's really what I'm getting. I'm getting that a romantic partner or a young spirit, right, sparks inspiration or divine union for some of you. And that new spiritual wisdom and a spiritual guide has arrived in your life. They are in the etheric realm and even maybe a spirit in the flesh, right, that is a wise person who is younger than you or youthful in spirit or who is just this undeniable spark of the divine. They hold a Akashic knowledge of the past and future and they awaken people. And, you know, the advice, you know, here in this card is for you to allow yourself to receive. Okay, so stay tuned for your Aries full moon, UA light celestial insight. And I hope that this aids your journey. Be sure to subscribe to the UA light YouTube and podcast. Leave comments and a positive review. Let me know what resonates with you and share this insight with someone that you love. Thanks for listening and take good care of your hearts. Hello, dear Sagittarius. The collective reading definitely applies to you in terms of balancing responsibility, self-care, health, and having divine helpers in your life. The stars and cards emphasize you receiving social and cosmic support in a moment of new beginnings and opportunities for improvement, reinvention, recovery, and breakthrough with overcoming negative core beliefs, self-criticism, habits, and even limiting ideas of what you can achieve and where you should reside to be the happiest. Lean into this opportunity for new beginning, rediscovery, and reinvention in career, co-worker relationships, self-care, and daily routines. And find the empowerment in reimagining your career and sources of income and home and family life for your success. Similar to Scorpio, there's this message that any breaks that you take, any losses, any people and wisdom that are being placed in your path by divine design are just that, by divine design to help in your personal and professional journey. All right, so stay tuned for your Aries full moon, UA light celestial insight. I hope that this aids your journey. Be sure to subscribe to the UA light YouTube and podcast. Leave some comments of what resonates with you. And thank you so much for listening. Make sure that you check out the remaining messages related to your sun, moon, rising sign, and any sign in which you have a stellium. Take a care of your hearts, dear Sagittarius. 
Hello to your Capricorns. Your reading is so similar to Scorpio's. And after all, you do have Pluto, their ruling planet, back in your sign and a part of this cosmic kite grand trine that is happening this month. The stars and cards indicate that you have been and are currently having some profound creative spiritual travel and growth opportunities related to publishing, public speaking or performance, higher education, sales and promotions with the public, expanding your reach and connection with people far away, and with your professional reputation and professional career achievements. But it hasn't been all work and no play. It's actually been full of fun and enjoyment as well. And overall, Capricorns, new beginnings and opportunities for improvements, reinvention, recovery, discovery, cosmic support, healing and reward are available for you related to product development, branding, sales and promotion, publishing of literary and creative projects, even transforming your appearance or the creative design and direction of something that makes a difference in its reach, impact, losses and gains. This is a month of clarifying your message, right? Maybe you're traveling as well for tour, vacation, and educational experience. And having experiences that gift you new inspiration and knowledge from exchanges with people who are different from you. Perhaps even related to difference in sexuality and spirituality. But also where your sense of self, how you see yourself and want to be seen in terms of your identity, your body, how you dress and adorn yourself, and also your personal boundaries are all changing. Maybe you are already and will be considering how to reinvent yourself in a way that communicates your transformed beliefs and even as a way of personally empowering yourself and showcasing a new and improved you. The astrology really could indicate that your body image and views on identity, right, transform powerfully by your experiences and by encounters with others. It indicates how you could even be someone who helps influence these sorts of ideas and transformations for others, right? Your testimony and creative creativity are just as much about you letting go and healing as they are about your ability to help others do the same. Okay, stay tuned for your Aries full moon, UA light celestial insight. I definitely hope that this aids your journey. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube and podcast. Leave comments and a positive review. Let me know what resonates with you. Share this insight with someone you love. Thank you for listening and take good care of your hearts, dear Capricorns. Hello, dear Aquarius. The overall sort of theme and, and message for you this month is about important investments and in divine divestments you are making in your life. New beginnings and opportunities for improvement, recovery, cosmic support, and reinvention are available for you personally and professionally this month after uh, what may have been a deep spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical healing time for you after some trauma or maybe some uh, critical experiences or feedback. It could be that an extended vacation or a financial investment and partnership makes you feel more empowered this month and, and uh, increases your finances, right? Your message from the stars and cards is super short and sweet this month in that it's a month of revealing new projects publicly and seeing the gains from investing in your mental and physical health, your living space, self-care, boundaries and discernment, and certain partnerships. 
This is a time when you are continuing to navigate when and with whom you can let your guard down, when you make public appearances, and overall what environments, relationships, and projects are worth your time, energy, attention, and participation. Some of you may be buying or selling property or sentimental items. Some things could be trial and error for you this month, but no matter what, you gain so much wisdom, which is power, right? So overall, this is a month where you are taking action and making divine divestments and important investments. And I wish you the best of luck this month, dear Aquarius. Stay tuned for your Aries full moon, UA Light Celestial Insight. And I hope that this short and sweet message aids your journey. Be sure to subscribe to UA Light YouTube and podcast and leave some comments of what resonates with you Share this insight with someone you love. Make sure that you watch the other messages that resonate with your sun, moon, and rising sign and any signs in which you have a stellium. Thank you for listening. Continue to take good care of your hearts, dear Aquarius. Hello, dear Pisces. Last but not least, okay, especially in terms of all of these cards that came out for your reading, okay? If you look here, you'll see. And I have to say, Pisces, this month it looks like you are facing something here about being honest with yourself and someone else or some others related to some truth you've wanted to ignore, right? This is about reevaluating a committed business or love relationship and potentially ending it for your best interest, right? And so that you are not collateral damage aboard like somebody's sinking ship or someone else's scandal or messy affairs. But for others of you, this is about the opportunity for improvement, recovery, cosmic support, and reinvention that can make for more successful business partnerships and sales, maybe from creative marketing ideas. It's definitely a time when integrating feedback could improve any projects or ventures involving fashion, beauty, representation, identity, uh, any products and services, right? Similar to the advice for Virgos, who is your sister's sign, right? The cards definitely encourage you to listen to your intuition and to not avoid hard conversations or difficult emotions, right? And to not be too self-critical if any circumstances you face this month are, you know, honestly because you had poor judgment, right? The advice cards in your personal reading and the collective astrology message just really encourage seeing blessings in disguise and using the wisdom that you gain from achievements and problems and failure to make different decisions, right? We have the leadership card showing up here for you in this card that says it's okay not to be okay and the problems card, right? Where they all, and also the inner critic, right? Where they all talk about seeing, you know, problems and, and difficulties as, you know, opportunities for resourcefulness, for improvement and, um, yeah, awareness, right? And so um, it is Virgo in retrograde season, right? And that is what it's all about. And so I'm going to leave it there. Your message is really short and sweet in that way. Even though there are a lot of cards, it really all comes down to this really central message and this synchronicity between the stars and the cards where your seventh house um, and your third houses, right, of relationships and communications and just decision making are, are highlighted here, okay? So stay tuned for your Aries full moon, UA light celestial insight related to this Aries full moon that is closing out the month. I hope that this aids your journey. Be sure to subscribe to the UA light YouTube and podcast. Leave some comments and review of what resonates with you and share this insight with someone that you love. Make sure that you watch the remaining messages related to your sun, moon, or rising sign, any sign in which you have a stellium. 
and thank you for listening and watching take good care of your hearts and happy new moon